Call of the Wild. I figured I'll leave the window open because, hey, that is the wild, the outside. Just kidding, it's just too hot to keep the window closed to get the noise. And no one really listens to my reviews anyways. Uh, I actually found this movie entertaining. I liked it. Uh, it was reminding me of those old movies that nowadays you'd find them, like the Yellow Cases from Disney Movie Club. They were made back when Walt Disney was trying to make like live-action family films. You know, Swiss Family Robinson, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Out the Dumpling Gang, uh, uh, well, not Out the, Out the Dumpling Gang, it's more like a joke thing. Uh, Modern equivalent would be like Pirates of the Caribbean and uh, National Treasure, you know. It's adventure stories, but for families. Like nothing too horrible that would give kids nightmares or wouldn't be appropriate for children to see, but nothing that's going to make the adults want to bludgeon their heads in because how stupid it is. Uh, once you get... Yes, I know the joke. Ha, ha, ha. No animals are harmed in making this film. Because no animals are in the making of this film. But, and you see what they make the animals do in this film? No way in hell any like, ASPCA or anybody would allow the animals to do what they did in this film. It would be way too dangerous for them. I mean, the animals could do it, but there would be no way to allow them to. What I appreciated most about this film was that it didn't have... Mm, I guess, for lack of a better word, would be modern politics in it. You know, Buck was, well, he wasn't a female. He was a male, obviously. He didn't uh, instantly become perfect at sled dogging when he was forced into doing it. Well, if, if it was a modern movie or a modern tale, she would have decided to run away from home because she didn't like it because her owners were oppressing her. She would have mastered sled dogging her first try the leader of the dog sled group would have instantly handed over the reins to buck because oh she's the bestest ever and she can do anything and she would have single-handedly saved the male the canadian male and would have turned into uh they wouldn't have started relying on the wires you know, that thing. Telegraphs, that's what they're called. And Harrison Ford's character would have just been sold once or twice. You know, it wouldn't have been a main thing because Buck wouldn't have been sold and the Sled Dogs wouldn't have been sold because she would have single handedly saved the mailing company and they would have never needed the uh, telecommunicators. And until this day, her pups would keep that going, and Canada wouldn't need telephones or internet or anything. They'd still be using sled dogs, because how great Buck was. That'd be modern storytelling. I think I'm kidding. Watch something like The Last Jedi. Watch Batwoman, Supergirl, any of this stuff that modern Captain Marvel, modern storytelling, there is no hero's journey anymore. There is no... Oh, the person, the character fails a little bit and then picks themselves up. Which is why I found it funny that all those people were complaining about, uh, what's that stupid movie called? See, I can't even think of it. It's the one that had, uh, Blake Lively in it, who was a spy. But she, she failed so much in that movie. Rhythm section, that's what it's called. She failed a lot during that movie, and she didn't succeed instantly, become a spy overnight, and kick Jude Law's ass. But, you know, they had a horrible marketing department and everything, and Disney did not do this movie any favors by releasing their own, like, Nanook or whatever it's called. It's the one with William Dafoe in it, and it actually had, uses, you know, sled dogs, huskies. So, and they released at the same time as this movie on Disney+, Plus. so it didn't really do much help, because most people thought, well, I only saw that one, I don't need to see Call of the Wild. Because this was a Fox movie. Fox paid for it. Disney's just doing a marketing push with the money that Fox has left over, probably. Even though that they didn't like claim it outright because it's not a Walt Disney Pictures, the 20th Century Picture Studios. Which, eh, it's still 20th Century Fox or just Fox to me. I'm still probably going to call it Fox. I like the actors, you know, I like the guy who was the original sled dog person. Uh, he was also in Jurassic World, he was Owen's partner, I can't remember his name, not the actor's name, or this one's French, 
or he has a French accent at least. Uh, Harrison Ford, obviously. Karen Gillen, I want to say her name is. She was the annoying Amy Pond in Doctor Who, and she was in Guardians of the Galaxy. She was the uh, blue girl, and she is in the new Jumanji films as the uh, female player character. She was in this film very shortly. Like, they must have made this before she hit it big, or she just loved the, she loved the story so much that she wanted to be in the movie, because it is a very, very, very tiny, minuscule role. She is in the film for, like, ten minutes, if that. Yes, this film hasn't made a couple times. They probably cut a lot of stuff out, though, because they don't need... Because they, uh... And a lot of them focus on the old guy in Buck. And this one, they focused more on... They did focus on him, but they focused a lot more on Buck's, like, inner turmoil and him wanting to be... Learning to listen to his, uh... Wild side, or whatever they want to call it. Like I said, I thought it was a fun family film. Will I buy it? Maybe on Black Friday, would I watch it again? Sure, why not? Like they said, so it's just a fun family film. It's one of those things you can put on, shut the kids up for a little while. You won't be, you won't want to be bored. You won't be bored on your mind, and when you put it on, uh, you may even find it enjoyable if you like those old type of films, like those old adventure films from Dis Walt Disney Studios before they closed up that section. You might like this movie. I'd give it like a B. And as I said, if you like adventure stuff, you'll probably like this one. Oh. The cartoon dog, once you get past, once you get like used to the fact that it's a cartoon dog, it's like Sonic. Once you get past that he's a cartoon character, you get over it. Takes like maybe a couple minutes to adjust, and then, eh, that's how the movie is. Unless you're one of those real idiots who complain and bitch and moan about CGI stuff. But the funny thing is, those idiots complained about Sonic, the original design. That original design is a puppet. Here, let me show you. I'm going to be hitting pause and then going back in. These are behind-the-scenes photos of the making of Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie. This is the puppet that they removed for a CGI character. So all those people who bitch about the prequels and their CGI and every other movie under the sun that has CGI in it, just remember, those idiots, just bring up Sonic to them. Those idiots bitched and complained for years about how CGI is horrible and you... Practical effects are better. You can't beat practical effects. And now they're praising a movie that got rid of practical effects for CG. Isn't that just wonderful? Thanks for watching and see you next time.